Dave Mosher, producer for Discovery Space at space.discovery.com. That is the official Discovery Channel website all about space, and this is your weekly wrap-up. If you're watching from your iPod or iTunes or something like that, you can get to my blog. There's a ton of material you can dive into after this video post, and that's at Space Disco, and the link is blogs.discovery.com forward slash space underscore disco. If you're on YouTube, you can get to that by clicking the More Info button. There is a link within that menu. That said, you can uh, see my new surroundings here. Let's just say I'm on vacation for a little bit at my neighbor's. Uh, but let's get to your wrap-up, the three big things that happened in space last week. Guys, check this out. This is the Orbiting Carbon Observatory, or that's what it was supposed to look like when it went into space, but it didn't quite get there. Uh, guess where it landed? Here, in the, the ocean, the Antarctic Ocean, actually. And what happened, the, this, the satellite was supposed to monitor carbon dioxide emissions all over the planet and really help out with climate change research, so it's a really huge bummer. Engineers spent nine years working on this thing, $280 million. By the way, there's no conspiracy about this crashing. It's, it just happens sometimes. Rockets fail. And speaking of which, engineers think it has something to do with this. This is called the fairing. This is the Taurus XL rocket, by the way, made by Orbital Sciences. But this part up here is called the fairing, and that's what actually holds that satellite. It doesn't look like this when it's in there. It's all kind of all folded up, and the solar panels are all folded up. But it's stuck in this fairing. And the fairing did not open up, and the satellite did not come out, and it was too heavy, and it returned to Earth in the ocean. So that's a really big bummer, and uh, hopefully NASA can get it together to send a suitable replacement. Um, speaking of weather, climate change, things like that, you guys remember good old Titan. This is one of the moons around Saturn. It's got all kinds of organic, sort of carbony stuff in there. It's got an atmosphere twice as thick as Earth's, believe it or not. Um, this is actually a false color image. Normally it's really just sort of orange and boring looking, but the cool thing about Titan is we've had Cassini out there for four years kind of looking at stuff, and check this out. This is a map of the wind patterns on the surface of Titan. It actually has dunes. There's little sand grains of organic compounds like kind of moving all over the, the surface of the planet, and this is what scientists have figured out by doing radar research. This is how the sand moves across the surface, mostly on the equator. It's really kind of wet up in the north and south poles here. And in the middle, it's really dry, so the stuff kind of blows away. But what they found was that the wind was moving exactly opposite the direction they thought it should be moving. So that's really kind of a big puzzle right now. And yet another mystery uh, around Saturn and its, its moons. These moons are just amazing. Even Jupiter, they're just all their own little planets, their own little worlds. And we've barely scratched the surface, so I'm really glad we're sending... Uh, a mission to Titan as well as Jupiter's moon Europa, which I mentioned in the last update. Um, and the last thing I have for you guys regards this. Whoa, there we go. The Big Bang. I mean, this is kind of a cheesy graphic, but the Big Bang happened 13.7 billion years ago, and ever since, space and time have been sort of expanding. Well, we're at a point, a really interesting point in the universe, where dark energy, this mysterious unknown force that makes up almost all the energy that came out of the Big Bang, is starting to push space apart faster and faster and faster. And what scientists have figured out is that eventually that's, that, that expansion of space is going to outpace the speed of light. Now, you're saying, wait a minute, that's not possible. Nothing can outdo the speed of light. Not the case with space itself, the fabric of space. It is allowed to break that rule because it's not transferring any sort of information. So eventually, what we know as the cosmic microwave background is going to disappear in a few billion years. So let's say humans are lucky enough to be around a few billion years from now, or our descendants, whoever they might be, they might not know about the Big Bang because they won't be able to see this. This is the cosmic microwave background radiation made by the WMAP probe, and it shows us what all the energy that came out of the Big Bang and, and how it's uneven, and it's really interesting and amazing when we found this, found this out. It really helped figure out a lot of cosmo cosmological problems with the universe. So in the future, observers aren't going to be able to see that, and that's really interesting because of dark energy. So that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you for tuning in, and see you on the site. <laughs>